Right. So we we are looking at uh, you know what uh, how can I develop this leadership or what what are the things that I should develop in me as a leader. So we looked at competence, right? We looked at um, knowledge and skill and experience, which is con competence. And then the second thing would be confidence. Right? Uh, our, our confidence in the Lord, our confidence, which results from positive um, outcomes or positive experiences. Um, so, uh, so this would, you know, this would give us confidence. And, and especially as people who are ministering, people who are uh, uh, in spiritual ministry, when it comes to a leader in spiritual ministry, you know, the thing is, um, sometimes we, we think, okay, I, I need to, you know, the pressure to, um, to you know, how do I say it now, the, the pressure to bring a new revelation or the pressure to, you know, um, to solve people's problems, or the you know the pressure to to bring answers you know so we normally we we kind of tend to put a lot of pressure or expectations on ourselves right um, to be able to you know, you know sound very scholarly or very very um, learned you know no, we don't have to do that right we can um, you know keep everything simple and uh, you know, share or communicate to the people, you know, the simplest way. Sometimes uh, the way we communicate, you know, the simpler, uh, the better. And uh, and, and the, to communicate in a simple way is sometimes very, uh, you know, it, it requires a lot of effort. But then, you know, especially if you see, you know, how can I communicate uh, something or how can I share uh, about some important, you know, uh, a, let's say a, a topic to a child, right? How can I teach faith to a child? How can I teach the gifts of the spirit to a child? You know, because we need to do it in very simple ways, right? Now, that would be the most effective. You don't have to sound very learned, sound very intelligent, sound very, you know, uh, but in very simple terms, when we share it, when we say it, um, to understand it right and uh, so that is the purpose right when we when we facilitate when we lead when we share um, so that it's received well okay and when that also you know results in greater confidence okay um when we as believers go through or when we journey with god and when we um you know with god carry out the things that he is called us to do and when we you know when, when it results in fruit fruitfulness that also you know uh, results in confidence okay so maybe okay let's say for example you're ministering in the gifts uh, of the spirit you know when it comes to let's say prophecy uh, uh, prophesying to the small group and learning and uh, and the thing is you you know you're stepping out in faith you don't know how it will be received you don't know how uh, things will go, but then you're stepping out in faith and sharing. You're stepping out in faith and prophesying, you know. And and when we test, when the other person tests the prophecy and testifies, saying yes, it is so, and this is what this is exactly true, and this is this is I believe that this is you know only God can reveal this to you. Then now that results in again you know faith in God, right? And we grow in our confidence, right? Because of these outcomes, these positive outcomes in God. Okay. okay. So that's about gifts. And then, you know, when, when others around us encourage us, uh, then we also, then also we grow in confidence. Okay. Now just let me just share the notes and we look at the next thing, which is compassion. Okay. Okay. So we see that you know what is important for uh, for us as servant leaders is this attribute or is this um, characteristic called compassion. Okay, so compassion is um, to empathize with people, is to move, to be moved in our hearts when we when we see people, when we when we uh, when we 
encounter uh, or you know when we when people share about their experiences when maybe difficulties maybe challenges um, you know this is a very important quality or an attribute okay now see we can minister without compassion right and there are many who do that uh, but to minister with compassion is to minister the way the lord ministered okay so and in the long run when we continue on to minister without the lord's compassion then we are going to be very harsh on people right uh, very 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 judgmental on people we can come down very hard on people right but is that what the lord wants no because the lord says these are you no know, when, when he talks about the people uh they are his flock like the church especially um again in, uh, we see this in um, i think towards the end of first peter um we see that uh, the lord saying you know uh, i mean peter uh, uh, giving this instruction um shepherd the flock of god which is among you serving as overseers not by compulsion but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly not as being lords over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock okay so saying this is the flock of god and this is how you shepherd the flock of god okay saying willingly uh eagerly not for dishonest gain not bossing over them right but being examples so so when we do this which means that we are actually you know when you're not bossing when you're not you're doing it with compassion right you're doing it the way you're being an overseer the way the lord would be right so he's saying it's a flock of god but you shepherd it right so this compassion is something that we as leaders can grow in because without compassion what happens is in the long run one you know we are we be harsh judgmental on people and really defeat the purpose for which why we are leading people right secondly um, the ministry itself right it becomes a burden we're not enjoying it at the very sight of people we you know we get oh we get uh, put off right? but whereas we need we need to understand that the ministry is about people and uh, yeah we are actually in ministry because god wants us to reach people god wants us to build people um you know we so that's the thing people are a very integral part of ministry right um so but without compassion what happens is that people become objects of irritation right for us so we, we get irritated we get upset all the time and the whole ministry itself becomes a heavy very heavy weight right it becomes a burden okay so um what is the solution what is the antidote you know build compassion as a leader right receive so the the way to do that is to to ask the lord lord you open my eyes you show me you know what you see uh in in these people right best is you know your the word of knowledge word of wisdom um you know you're just leaning into it and saying spirit of god you know reveal something about this person something good about this person what is it that you see and and prof you know the prophecy the prophetic is to um you know edify to exhort and bring comfort right? edification exhortation and comfort so so edification exhortation and comfort would you know that it would actually prophecy would reveal the lord's heart for them right so when we when we pray and ask god lord you know show what is it god because it will be a message the prophetic word will be a message of you know uh, edification exhortation and comfort but even correction will come with that right it will be a it will be something which is redemptive right so so when we lean in when we ask the spirit of god so the spirit of god reveals something about this person and then we are able to 
you know, exercise compassion and say, okay, God, this is how you see this person. This is what you see in this person. This is what you want this person to become. And, and then you, you know, we make that adjustment to our own hearts. If you're, if you're seeing this person, you know, this person might be most irritating, most, uh, you know, doing all those uh, funny things, but, but Lord, you know, this is how you see him. This is how you see her. Right. And, uh, this is all you. This is what you want for him. This is what you want for her. So, uh, like, yes, Lord, I want the same thing. I want their life to be a blessing. I want their life to change. I want their life. I want them to do well. You know, all that. So, you know, your your whole thing changes. Your whole perspective about person changes, resulting in compassion. Right now, next time you meet, next time you have a conversation, and uh, and that person says, "Okay, I have these needs." You're able to reach out in compassion. Okay. Okay. So that's the third thing. Okay. Fourth one that we can develop is collaboration, which means to work together. Okay. Work with others. Um, those who are our leaders, you know, we, we, we might be leaders, but there are, you know, there will be others whom the Lord has placed over us to lead us. Or it could be to those who are uh, the the ones who we lead, who 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 people look up to, or maybe there's a formal, uh, you know, a, a, a formal relationship in leading, like a team or something. So whom you lead, and also your peers, peers meaning the ones who are contemporaries who are on the same level with you, right? So so we need to develop the ability to work together. Right to, to, so this is what we call as collaborate to to work together, um, and also, you know, sometimes God might bring people across, you know, maybe other leaders, maybe other ministers, uh, bring. Uh, there's a divine connection that He wants to bring about, just to strengthen one another, right? Just to strategically help one another, serve one another, um, bring strength into people's lives, see from one another. To, you know, so we need to know how to work together, right? collaborate, work together. And uh, uh, the best way to do it is to you know, look at people in our lives. Okay, who are the people God has placed in our lives? Um, and uh, you know, them being a source of encouragement and support and strength. Okay. So, so the thing is maybe, you know, some, well, God, the Lord has uh, graced them in certain ways. You know, he's given them certain gifts, given them certain strengths. And as we collaborate, as we work together with them, we begin to receive of what God has poured into their lives. Okay, Certain others, maybe they don't have the same kind of gifting or same kind of uh, you know, strengths, or maybe it's something else. Right? And again, working with them, collaborating with them, we are able to receive from the Lord, what God is doing in them, doing through them. Okay, um, so it works both ways. As leaders, when we collaborate with other leaders or collaborate with others, work together with others, what God has put in us, what God has uh, filled us with, we are able to, you know, serve others with that. Right? So, so four areas: competence. Uh, what is the second one? Confidence, confidence, compassion, and collaboration. Okay. Um, there are also the five levels of leadership. You know, um, this is again, I think John C. Maxwell has mentioned this. Um, five levels of leadership being one is position. Okay, which means what is it? You know, you're formally appointed as a leader. Okay, maybe you're appointed as a let's say, you know, as a team leader. Okay, it could be an organization, it could be a ministry, you're appointed as a team leader. So people follow because they have to follow, because you have a title of leadership. You know, you're the cell group leader, or you're the you know, area leader, whatever. You have a formal title which has been given to you, you have a responsibility, you have authority. Right? So people follow because they have to, okay? because of your position. 
you know that's a that's one level of leadership you know if you look at let's say five steps or you know, if you can picture one two three four five five steps this would be the first step okay people follow because you have to the second one would be you know people follow you because they want to right so they give you permission they give us the permission to lead them which means something has happened you you know we we won over the trust of people they look at our lives right um, and also recognize some of the things uh, that we have right what god has put in us they recognize that and uh, maybe you know see how we've been leading by example right um see the attributes see the character see the integrity they observe watch and then say okay i give you the permission to lead me okay and they follow because they want to they want to um you know follow you as a leader okay so that's permission um third thing would be production or fruitfulness or you know effectiveness in a sense people follow because what you've done for the organization okay you you know the ministry okay they've seen your expertise they've seen your experience and skill and and what that has brought to the organization right and uh, they follow you because of that production of your fruit of your effectiveness okay um fourthly people could follow because of what you're doing for them okay you've oh you've you've taught and uh, you've caused them to you know you've taught them the word of god and you you enable them to recognize god's call for them okay you've taught for them for the first time they they understood that yes god has a call for me god has a purpose for me okay uh you you've taught them right and and you also you know constantly you're teaching them okay this is the call of god this is the uh these are the this is the grace of god upon your life um this is what he's calling you to and this is how you can move into that and you know you you're developing them as a believer as a as a disciple so because of what you're doing for them and how you're developing them as believers as uh disciples as ministers now they follow you okay so that's maybe the fourth stage people development um the other level would be personhood okay because of, it's it's so similar to you know uh, that they're giving you permission but you know it's 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 more than that because of you know because of who you are your life your walk your your everything you know your speech your action and uh, your choices um and they which means that they have observed all that and they follow you because of who you are and what you represent you know as a person personhood now that would be a you know that would be a high level of leadership right um the first one would be position you know, it's because of the leadership title you know you're appointed as a leader now they don't know anything about you but you're appointed and well because of the title because of the role they would follow you second one is they give you permission okay i uh, because of they want to they find they see something in you and uh, they see some skill in you they see some ability in you and they say okay i'll give you the permission to to lead me right and then third one production because what you bring into the organization bring into the ministry bring into the team they see the advantage of it the benefits of it and they say okay because of this i choose to follow this person you know i choose to allow this person to lead me right um fourthly when when we develop when we bring something into their lives when we develop them from mature from immaturity mature, to maturity from ignorance to you know learning a place of knowing so they see that and then they say okay i'd like to follow this person and lastly you know it's about who you are as a person it's about who you are as a child of god as a minister of god they've seen that observed that seen that and maybe it's over a period of time and then they say okay i'd like to 
follow them because of who he is or who she is and what a he he or she represents right so that's a so these are levels of leadership okay so as a cell group leader you know we we go through this entire process right sometimes um step 1 step 2 step 3 and uh, the higher we go you know here are some things to understand the higher we go the high, longer it takes right the longer it takes for what the longer it takes to um you know win the commitment of people win the people over right uh, the the higher we go the our commitment also there's a there's a there's a ask on our commitment right um there's a in, in other words you know the our commitment level needs to be higher like to be a person of like a person who would leader uh, our commitment to everything you know to our commitment to the task our commitment to the call has to be stronger okay it's a higher level of commitment okay the higher we go the easier it becomes to lead because people are willing to you know to carry out there are i mean is you're not struggling to lead it becomes easier to influence to be an influencer okay um the higher we go the greater the growth and um, and the thing is you know the, the interesting thing is you know even though we say okay there are five levels it is level 1 plus level 2 okay when we go to the level 2 it is level 1 2 and level 3 and we are at level 3 so it's like we never leave those you know earlier levels of leadership behind it includes that and the level that we are on which means you might be a person who leader and people are calling you because of who you are and what you become but but you also carry a formal title right uh, and people call follow you because of the formal title as well and it's also because you know they have given you permission it's also because what you brought into the organization right so it's it's this level and the ones before that as well okay okay so as a leader you will not be on the same level with all your people that's understood that's you know people well they could be in a in a different uh, level of maturity level of understanding and uh, they may not always agree they may not always understand the reason uh you need that's reality understand that okay and you need to work to carry other leaders with you up the steps there could be let's say you have many leaders you know you're you're in place of leadership there are many other leaders you know maybe you're a senior pastor of a church and you have other leaders who are there and uh, we need to make sure that you carry other leaders onto this you know process of leadership as well and uh, we need to do something um either input or correction or help in order to take the leaders you know on the, on this path right okay um oh, okay any questions before we move into the next one about uh, uh, the leadership or any any doubts okay these are these are pretty general things right um that what we've been discussing so there are any questions you can ask um any challenges that you personally faced in leadership situations you can ask um okay fine okay so then let, let's move on uh, but if you have doubts if you have questions please free feel free to you know you're always welcome to post it um on the chat right okay so here we're going to look at uh, a few things uh, in the next um, uh, you know in the next half an hour we're going to look at uh, how uh, we need to develop you know we've been talking about developing competence developing confidence uh, developing you know all these other areas collaboration and so on um one other area that you know especially since we're talking about spiritual leadership it's to develop the ability to minister okay as a spiritual leader to be able to develop the ability to minister okay 
minister what in what sense minister the word of god that right? you're serving people but you're serving them with the word of god right so minister the word of god and minister the ministry of the holy spirit okay the work of the holy spirit like being a channel being uh an instrument for the the work of the holy spirit okay so both both go hand in hand so developing the ability so which means that me as a leader i develop the ability in my own life and uh, you know if we are looking at uh you know grooming other leaders grooming people from you know being ministers to leaders so this is something that we need to develop in them as well okay so it's quite important and uh, let's uh, let's look at that okay i'm just sharing the notes again okay the first one is yeah let me see. yeah okay the first is the ability to teach the word okay ability to teach the word well uh, this is what paul says about a servant of god and uh, you know specifically a personal instruction to timothy okay, second timothy 2 and verse 15 uh study to show yourself approved to god a workman who need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth okay so study to show yourself approved unto god second timothy 2 and verse 24 and a servant of the lord must not quarrel or must not strive but be gentle to all okay. able to teach okay patient and so on so this able to teach ability to teach is something that we can learn that we can um we can develop okay. so this ability to teach first of all it starts with us becoming students of the word okay now this is something basic we have, we have learned it right from the first semester onwards uh, especially you know when you talk about uh, um uh, some of the things that we have seen you know uh, read in the book code of honor and uh, kingdom builders developing leaders by the word of spirit and you know these are these are things that we are uh, we've already studied but specifically you know we we need to uh, we need to understand this that in others you know in the process of making disciples like right? this is what we're talking about right the great commission making disciples um in making disciples this also is another aspect you know when you're raising up leaders who again go and make disciples the leaders need to have this ability developed in them now not all would be called to a like a full fledged ministry of the word or a pulpit ministry in a church we understand that but in some form some manner you know maybe it's one on one maybe it's uh you know a small group like what we are saying cell group one has to have the ability and that comes from first of all studying the word of god themselves personally and and other things like being able to present being able to communicate right being able to facilitate now these are these are different things you know when you're presenting it's it's just one way right you're preaching and uh, we are teaching then it's then it's more interactive um and when it's uh, when it comes to uh, facilitation then then it's even more you know less um what do you call you know uh, you're just you know uh, facilitating would mean that you're just enabling people to share enabling people to ask questions directing you know those answers and so on you know so uh, ability you know develop that ability develop the skill okay, as a as a minister then uh, what are the what is the other thing the baptism in the holy spirit okay so teach the word then baptism in the holy spirit so we've all learned about uh, you know the baptism in the holy spirit And, and and a good resource to go to is again you know we we have in our list uh, on the website so you can go and check it out 
you know the wonderful benefits of speaking in tongues and baptism and the holy spirit and and um, you know one gifts of the holy spirit you know these are these are these are books that you can refer to so how to you know how to lead a person uh, to be baptized in the holy spirit uh, you know what are some key things that you will teach them in a simple way right in a concise way everything that involves that you know why baptism what is i'm talking about baptism of the holy spirit right why baptism in the holy spirit why what does it mean to be baptized with the holy spirit and uh, what is the importance of that and how will how does that happen right all those things and then leading them um in a prayer and so that they receive the baptism of the holy spirit and accompanied by you know maybe gift of tongues or prophecy or whatever it is right and also you know uh, teach them about the gifts uh to receive the gifts of the spirit and uh, you know we know that the initial one or the most simple of the gifts i would be you know praying in tongues and um and to teach about that as well to remove all you know doubts and questions uh, uh clarify you know all doubts and questions they really might have about the topic and so uh, one should be equipped to do that should study in order to be able to uh, share that right so so uh, so it's a good thing to be equipped in you know and to talk to teach and to minister the baptism with the holy spirit the other uh, thing would be healing okay when it comes to healing physical healing emotional healing um you know how do i minister it right so i mean again we have resources right i'm sure you've gone through uh healing and deliverance as a course um so some basic things knowing that it's god's will to heal those who are sick you know when you look at the cross the cross the redemptive work uh includes physical healing you know in addition to forgiveness to salvation and breaking of curse and bondage it includes physical healing right so then know the different ways by which god heals right what are the different ways well i can pray i can believe in faith to personal faith in god right i have personal faith and i believe and i pray or it could be you know the faith of the other person right who's actually praying and ministering right and uh, the different ways by which god heals you prayer you pray and ask or you pray and command right you declare and you command the condition to leave uh, uh, or it could be in an atmosphere of praise and worship right there is a environment an atmosphere of praise and worship and well there is no petition or anything it's just that the lord jesus is being ex- exalted and lifted up in worship and the supernatural works of god are being made manifest right so the different ways by which god heals and one receives healing and and also teaching from god's word to build faith for healing right healing verses healing scriptures um the ministry of the lord the cross the name of the lord all that which build faith in the hearts of people to receive healing right and knowing how to minister healing to the sick now that is we personally you know laying on of hands or or rebuking the enemy and uh, you know knowing how to minister healing to the sick the prayer of agreement and so on so this is another area so we looked at um, you know ability to teach the word uh to teach and minister in the baptism of the holy spirit to minister healing and uh, ministering deliverance okay you now maybe they are uh some of the things that they're doing are you know are because of the influence of the enemy influence of the devil the powers of darkness so having an understanding of that and uh, knowing our authority in Christ right how we have been given authority over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy how he has given us that he has delegated that authority to us and several realms of authority right so i mean several reasons for which 
we have caring authority, different reasons. Um, so to be strong in that, to teach about that. Um, so this is something that that can be beneficial to a person, right? to a to a leader who's being raised up, ministering deliverance, right? knowing how to minister to the oppressed, those who are possessed right? uh, by demons, to minister healing, right? And so which means that, uh, you know, so the person who, uh, in the cell group, you know, we're raising up leaders and, uh, you know, you think about it, how wonderful the church would be if every one of them in the church are built up, right, are raised up in each of these things, right? To, to share the word, to study the word, to, to be able to, you know, preach the word um, in whatever setting, right? To be able to, to, so they come to an understanding about the Holy Spirit, about the baptism of the Spirit, and to, you know, they can teach to people uh, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about the gift of tongues, and about all the other gifts, and, and minister to them right, in a simple way, uh, pray and ask the Lord to fill them with the Spirit. Right? How wonderful it will be if every believer in the church is strong in these things. Then we'll have a strong church. Right? So this is what can be accomplished through the cell group ministry to the small groups ministry. So every believer can be strong in these things because uh, the cell group, you know, not only can, can, you know, the, uh, all these aspects can be taught, but also in the cell group, they get an opportunity to exercise this, you know, to pray for one another, to prophesy, to, to exercise the gifts, to, to exercise what they have learned in a small way, right? In the, in the cell group. So this is very, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful if every, every believer is raised up to that level. Okay, then we also look at counseling. Okay, knowing how to counsel people in the word, will, and the ways of God. So, um, you know, it need not, we need not be counselors, but how to bring the counsel of God. Okay, maybe there is a problem, maybe there, there is a, you know, there is a, a challenge and it needs the wisdom of God right so one doesn't have to be a counselor to take them through a counseling process but one can actually bring the counsel of God okay now this is God's heart on this matter this is God's way this is God's will about you know, this um, this is what the word of God talks this is what you know the the principles and the precepts of God about this particular matter you know, whether it's marriage, whether it's you know something else, so you know to be um, God first and foremost, and to gain the understanding, and to be able to share this. Okay, now that is something that we can also be trained in and train others in as well. Okay, so what are those? Uh, you know, I think we looked at about five things, six things. Right, one is ability to teach the word. Um, to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to minister healing, to minister deliverance, and to be able to bring the, the, the counsel of God, right? Counseling. Well, it can be those who are called to be counselors, those who are called and gifted in this area, they can pursue this even further, right? And, and do this, you know, as uh, counselors in the body of Christ. Okay? Okay. So, so these are things that uh, that are very useful, that are very important, and uh, I think um, it'll be great if we look at a church. Uh, you know, if we look at a church, if we look at a cell group, which is you know functioning in this manner, and uh, and you see everyone uh, being built to this place. Okay, so that which is what we see, you know, when we when we look at Ephesians four. Uh, we see we see that believers that the saints can do the work being equipped to do the work of ministry right teaching the word uh, ministering the baptism of the spirit ministering healing ministering deliverance right bringing in the counsel of god okay so these are things that um, you know we as uh, believers uh, we, we 
I mean, believers are to be equipped in all these um, in all these areas. So, so that's that's one of the th- key things that can happen, you know, in a ministry. So, in our own churches, in our own ministries, right, we can we can look at it. Okay, how do I bring this to happen? Well, a wonderful option is the cell groups through cell groups, um, where this is being constantly you know, done or through the church and, and specifically through cell groups, right? So so the leaders themselves have to be trained and developed in this area so that they can further train and develop others in this as well, right? Okay, so, um, so just an encouragement, you know, those of you who are already in ministry, who are already serving the Lord, you know, uh, in the churches and so on, you know, you begin to look at other believers, uh, look at the flock of God in this manner, right? Um, and see, you know, can I make these adjustments? Uh, where can I make these alignments you know, to the word of God, what, what the word of God is saying? And, and how can I build people up in the spirit? And how can I, you know, uh, people up in these things so that they can cause the edification of the body Okay, so the obje- the end result would be a strong church. The end result would be people doing ministry, okay, and which is what like we want, which is what God wants, right? Okay, so for us to think on those terms and also uh, actually do it, you know, for those of us who are leading cell groups, for those of us who are, um, you know, maybe part of cell groups, to to look at cell groups as opportunities where for for to happen, you know, not just. Uh, gathering together and you know having coffee tea and you know talking about other things well those are all important well there's value in that you know they were developing friendships but uh, but in addition to that you know to keeping the main thing what is the core thing well this is what it is right so um, so those of us who can who are cell group leaders you can do this right? intentionally step into this okay okay so what we'll do is we'll stop here and continue in our next class. And next class, we will continue with uh, uh, the following topic, which is developing specific functional skills. Okay, uh, like people skills, professional skills. We're going to look at that because those are important for uh, leaders as well. Like, and we're going to look at a little more about the counseling skills also. Uh, we're going to look at that. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. God bless. Um, We'll have a good week. Bye-bye. God bless.